And as promised, part two, how to actually weave on a uh, cardboard loom. By Rhonda Gutierrez, I'm the instructional coordinator at Bosque Redondo Memorial. And in my first video, uh, I showed you how to make a cardboard loom. And in fact, this is the cardboard loom that we made. Now, when students come to the memorial and we're doing activities, we tend to have already a packet made up, so it makes it a little easier. And so what I'm going to show you guys today is basically everything that's inside here and get you started on weaving. Now, what typically comes in here and what you're going to need, it's very useful, you're going to need some yarn. And basically, um, these are just kind of pieces cut up. I made about five feet and then just kind of created like a little butterfly. And so I have a couple of three colors. I also have some blue. Now, whatever colors you want, it's, you know, it's completely up to you what you want to do. Now, it's kind of important. You don't want to use something really, really thin like um, embroidery thread unless you're using a loom kind of like this one where you can see the threads are very, the warp threads are very close. But since we're using a loom which the warp threads are kind of spread out, we really want to make sure that we're using a kind of heavier yarn. And you can also use real bulky weight if you want to, or you can even use ribbon on these the wider ones. Now, if you're using ribbon, it's not, it's going to be pretty short, but here we are, yarn. The other thing is you'll need some kind of comb. Now, uh, the easiest comb you can find is a fork. And so you can use a, a, a kitchen fork. And what a comb does is it, as you're creating the, um, the weaving, you want to bring the uh, yarn down. And so we'll show, I'll show you about that in a minute. Now, yarn, um, you'll need uh, something to weave it through the cardboard loom. So you'll need some kind of needle. Now what I did here, and I don't know if you can see this, this is just to get just a popsicle stick in which I drilled a tiny little hole in it. Now, if you're going to drill it, one of the things you want to do is very do it very slowly because it breaks them. But for every five or six that I make that are correct, I end up breaking a couple. So you can do that. Or you can use um, a crochet needle, um, a, a big, large darning needle. They make them in plastic or metal. So whatever you have, but popsicle sticks with a little hole in it. All you're needing it for is something to kind of use it as a needle. And then your loom, as you created already using the first video. So we'll start. And basically, I'm going to kind of start here with your butterfly. Get you some thread. Now, this one's a long one. You don't have to use all of it. So I'm just going to use about like that. Get that up there. <clears throat> now, it is kind of challenging to meet, put a thread through the little popsicle stick because sometimes popsicle sticks can have little um, threads on them. And then all you're going to want to do is literally go in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, and in. Then simply pull it through. This is why you don't want a super long thread because boy, it can take a lot of time just pulling it all the way through. Now, when you get kind of to the end, like I am here, you just want to stop because you're going to kind of weave this in under. Kind of work it under. And it will kind of go away. Now you see it's all kind of up on the top. This is where you take your fork and you bring it down. Now, when you go back the other direction, here's my needle. I have too many pieces of yarn here. When you go back in the opposite direction, what is important is to weave. It has to go the opposite way. So wherever the string comes down, now you look at this and you'll want to lift this up so that it's going in the opposite direction. So over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, like that. Now, very important once you start to pull this through. Uh, the tendency, 
for our students is really pull it hard. And when you pull it hard, it just pulls it over like that. You don't want to pull it hard. In fact, you don't ever want to pull them hard because I'll show you what happens. So let me see if I can do this. Loosen it up. You want it kind of loose because what you're going to do is you're using your fork. And the fork is what brings it down. You can tighten it just a little bit if it starts to warp, uh, change the direction. Uh, there we go. So, and then you just keep working it down. And you just keep going. In and out, in and out, in and out, over, under, under. So, and I'm always re-threading my little needle here. rows in and so I'm going to show you a couple of things I'm going to show what happens if by five rows in if you pulled it too tight what happens and what the weeding starts looking like and then I'm also going to show you how to change colors so okay so that is about four or five rows now what happens if you pull too tight well that's what happens it starts to come in on both sides so what it'll do is it'll keep going like this until, and then it kind of goes out. And so instead of having a square, like a coaster square, like you want, you're going to end up with this hourglass. So that's because this person went too tight, or the person, me, because I wanted to demonstrate too tight. And it's really easy to do too tight. So if you do, you just can undo it and redo it. So you want to check your corners, all the, the edges, all the time. So, okay, now we want to change. So we'll take this off and just cut uh, just probably a good inch or so, like that. And then you want to weave this back in. And so what will happen is as you put the other color, it will kind of lock it into place. That's what weaving is. It's blocking thread into place between all of these threads. So ta-da. Now it's important where it came over, that's where you want to start again. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use this, use one of these yellows. Sometimes, there we go. Again, put your needle. And this is where it's important when you're starting to change colors, it's because you don't, it, with weaving the other color, the other end in, sometimes it gets confusing, and sometimes what happens is that you don't, <laughs> like I said, it's gonna be a little challenging sometimes with that little popsicle stick. Some yarn, the orange must have been a little thinner. Okay, so now I got my little popsicle stick. Because you know, you look here, and it goes over, and you might think, oh, well, now this one went under, so now I need to go over. No, you actually need to go under. So again, pull it through. Oops. And then again, this one, you're going to also weave because you won't, you don't want the ends just kind of hanging out there. You want to cover your ends. So you weave that back in. And push that down. And now I'm going to go back the other direction. You won't even be able to tell that you had extra threads. Because they just disappear. 
And the sky is the limit with this. Once you get started and you start lighting it, you can change colors partway. plastic fork, a multi-tool. So, like that. And then you just keep going. And if ever, let me show you some of the things that some of this, what I've seen happen and the problem is they say, okay, uh, and they'll look at this and they decide, okay, I'm gonna go the under over a different way. Say so you did that. Well, this is what's going to happen. You pull it through, ah, the other way comes out. That means you went right back in the same direction because you gotta wrap it around. So you gotta make sure. The other problem I've seen a lot of times with beginning weavers is when they come to the end like this, Instead of going under this first warp thread here, I've seen them go over and skip these two and go in. If you do that, you're gonna end up with exposed warp thread. It's gonna look like this. See, the exposed, it didn't catch this one. So you don't wanna do that. So we gotta go back over and back through and undo that. So those are some of the beginning mistakes I see oftentimes with beginning weavers. It's either pulling the um, this thread way too tight, so you end up with an hourglass, or getting confused and going back under. And then, or I've seen some students just kind of do this, where they go two or three or four, nah, you can't cheat. You gotta actually do it all the way. So it's whatever thread, it's just you get used to seeing it, and the more you get used to seeing it, the more sense it makes. You'll be like, oh, because at first it's really confusing, but then if you notice, here you're gonna have this loop, and this loop is gonna catch this last thread, and that's what you want. So it goes like that. So now what you wanna do is just keep going. You change as many colors as you want, and go all the way up to the top. So there you have it, how to basically how to start weaving on a cardboard loom. Now, um, throughout time, and at different times, I may include other videos showing more advanced techniques where you can have the color making like arrows and those sorts of things so you can start working with patterns. So, thank you very much and thank you for uh, uh, listening to part two, how to weave on a cardboard loom. Bye-bye.